have a confession. I'm a giant nerd. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. This one is a bit of fan art that I have painted for myself. Little background story, I have a hermit crab tank and I've always joked that it's my little piece of booty bay from World of Warcraft. Well, the area above the tank needed a new painting. So what would be more fitting than a scene of World of Warcraft? And I painted this in colors that match my decor so it goes perfectly in my living room. Seriously, I told you I was a nerd. All of the supplies that I use for this video are listed below in the video description. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now, onto this tutorial. I'm starting with the background for the sky and the water. For both of these sections, I'm using phthalo blue, phthalo green, and white to get this teal color. Notice I've got it lighter at the bottom of the sky and then lighter at the top of the water. For the water, I'm painting this in a sort of U shape to help me create the depth of the water. I've sprayed stars into that background by using a stiff round brush, a palette knife with white paint and a little bit of water, and then I airbrushed that texture in the sky. I also airbrushed the rays of light in the water. For the background of this, I'm just loosely blocking in my cliffs. I'm going to start with the trees. Whenever I paint trees, I will almost always use at least three colors. Black, then I will layer some green sections on top, letting bits of the black show through, and then a lighter green on top of that. In this case, I also added some of the teal color so that I could soften those edges. Now I am staying with a fairly cartoony look on this one because this is a scene from a video game. I've gotta make sure any streaks in my waterfalls are slightly curved so they go the direction of the waterfall. I don't want them to all be perfectly straight or it will all look flat. I'm starting to sketch in the texture on these cliffs. I'm also pulling some of that teal color. I've added a little bit more white than what I used for my background, but I'm pulling that color into the cliff as well. By using the same colors that I use in one portion of the painting onto everything else, so again, that teal color onto the mountains, that helps to pull and make everything fit together better and feel like it's a part of the same scene. Now I've used a charcoal pencil to draw in where my palm trees are going to go. I've also loosely blocked in where the port is going to be so I don't waste time putting detail in the trees where it's going to be covered by the little town. So I've got the tree trunks here. Next week I will have a tutorial showing you exactly how to paint palm trees so that'll be much slower. You can really see what I'm doing. But just like my other trees, I start with the black. Then I go on top with a medium green and then highlights of a brighter green on top of that. Now I'm just blocking in my water surface. I'm not going to worry about the shading or anything like that. I'm going to fix that later on. Make sure that any of my little water ripples are very horizontal. I don't want too many vertical lines or it'll make my water look lopsided. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I will come back and add details to the water later, but I'm going to start blocking in the little town. Now these lines are not going to be perfectly straight. I mean, lines that should be parallel. If I was really painting something that was very, very realistic, that's not the case here because again, being a scene from a video game, this is not really the most structurally sound little town. I'm using a turquoise color for the underside of all of these wood planks. Also shading all of the poles here. Now for my darkest area, I'm going to come back through with a little bit of that bright blue on the shadowed areas after putting the black. That gives it a bit of a glow. And that blue, it's just the same turquoise that I was using or the teal that I was using in the water. As I work throughout the piece, I'll continuously come back and add more detail to that section of the dock. But moving on to the next building, I don't want too much detail back here. I kind of want this faded into the background. And I don't mean blurry like you guys often see me do with the airbrush because I want it to be somewhat in focus, but I also don't want a ton of little detail. So I'm using a fairly large brush to actually do most of this so that I don't get too much tiny detail. I'm using the same colors, those same turquoise and teal colors that I used everywhere else. And over here, I am just loosely blocking in all of the little platforms and the roofs of the buildings. Getting my shadows underneath these platforms. You can see as I work, I'm very, very loose, very messy. I will continuously build up more and more detail as I go. And it goes through a lot of ugly stages to get to that point. 
for all of the windows. I want them to have a very warm glow, but in order to get the oranges and the yellows to really show up, I first have to paint them white because white is opaque. The orange and the yellows are too translucent. So if I just painted orange or yellow over that dark blue, they're not going to show up. So first I painted all of those windows white, let it dry, and then I could go on top with the yellows and oranges to really let them pop. Same thing here, making sure those windows are really bright. And what I will do at this point is start working on my contrast, making sure my darks are dark enough and my lights are light enough. I will work through the entire town, just going back and forth, little things, little details here and there. I keep backing away from the piece to decide if I need to brighten or darken in any given area. I'm gonna come through with the airbrush to brighten up the windows to create more of a glow just for those windowed areas. Brighten those up. Now I'm going to come back through with the airbrush again with some black and define my shadows, which gives me a lot more depth in that little town. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to come back on top of the windows with orange and yellow to really create that warm glow from the inside of those buildings. A few more highlights on my trees. I'm going to come down to the water here. I've added a few more highlights there as well. And now I'm working on the, the underwater section. I designed all of this in Photoshop before I ever started drawing or painting. That way I did not find out after I started painting that the turtle wasn't going to fit in that area, which was the case with my first turtle that I was going to paint. So I, again, designed all that in Photoshop. That way I could move everything around and decide what was going to look best. So for this turtle, I've sketched everything out with unbleached titanium white and white. Then I added some of that teal color for his back. Now I'm coming through with my browns and some of the golds and even magenta. For the wrinkles on his neck, I'm just overlapping those lines, making sure that they go in the right direction. But I'm not worried that they're the exact same as what I had on my reference photo. I just need to make sure that those lines are going in the right direction. Adding some highlights here to this fin. I want it to feel like his fin and his face is kind of coming out of the canvas. So I've brightened that up versus the rest of his body where I've got more of the blue, which sets it back farther. Now for these fish, I'm adding a lot of orange, a lot more orange than you would typically see in a Moorish idol. And I'm going to do a lot of shading on them as well to make them feel like they're a part of the water or a part of the scene, not just cut out and stuck on top. If I just used white, yellow, and black like those fish really are, they would have just looked so flat. For the shark, I'm using the same colors I used on that background water to make him feel like he's farther in the distance. I just adjusted my values. There is not a lot of detail on him. That's a big deal. Later on, I will use the airbrush to pull some rays of light over him, and that will help set him back even farther in the distance. Now for these last fish, I want to make sure that they feel like they're further back in the water. I don't want them to pop out quite as much as the turtle or the fish on the other side. So here, I'm painting them in pretty bright colors, but once I'm done getting these painted in, I'm going to take my airbrush and I'm going to spray a bit of teal or a turquoise color over them. It's going to push the, these fish and the yellow ones and the coral that are to come. All of these are going to get pushed way back and it'll make it feel like they're all a part of the water. Instead of right now, you can see like it looks like they're up front too far which is not what I want. But I'm just going to paint them how I regularly would, knowing that I'm just going to put that, that turquoise on top later on. So right now those yellow colors are just really, really bright. After a few more details and some bubbles in the water, I went through, added some more rays of light, and then took that turquoise color that I was talking about earlier and airbrushed it over the fish on the right. So that really pushed them farther back. And that is it for this one. Thanks for watching. Again, if you were supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So...
nerd time. I've been playing Warcraft since a few months after it originally came out. Yes, I'm old. Back then, my main was a human lock. Shortly after BC came out, I switched over to a Blood Elf Holy Priest, which is how I raided for many years. I was a really good healer, not so great at PvP. Every time someone attacks me, I panic. That's not a good PvP player. Seriously, just like button smashing. Oh my god, get them off me! The healing for raids and heroics, that I was good at. I used to play way too much. I don't have time for that now, so I don't raid anymore or run heroics even. All I do now is work on achievements, rep grind, and collect pets. I have a lot of pets. 